Welcome to another podcast, Lifted by Life Proof. I'm Angelo Milas, I'm 24 uh, and I'm an entrepreneur. Where do I even start? So I guess we'll go back to like, maybe I was at primary school. Um, I was that guy that sold sweets. Everyone used to come to me for sweets. I was that guy. Um, and I think that's where, oh, I didn't even know at the time, but that's kind of where the the skills of being an entrepreneur kind of started. And then I went to secondary school um, and there was a game called FIFA, which everyone's probably heard of, uh, Ultimate Team. There's a thing called Ultimate Team. And what you basically had to do was, it was all about building coins and getting the best team that you could. Now, again, I didn't even know this at the time, but I found out a way to build the coins and sell them. And then I became almost like the coin shop for people at school. So people used to come to me, listen, I need 10,000 coins, um, how much? And then at the night I used to, you know, like trade the coins and build my coins up. And then at school I used to sell them. Um, I remember I used to have like um, a pound coin tin and it went up to like 80 pounds. And every time people used to give me pounds for the coins, I used to like top up the tin and the tin used to just go up. Um, so yeah, I guess that's, that's another kind of skill that I learned. Um, and then I went to college after secondary school. I studied BTEC business. Um, I can't even remember what grades I got. I did all right. I think I did all right. Uh, I wasn't really academically like part of the really clever. Um, obviously, I think school's important, um, especially like, you know, English maths is important, but most of the things that I learned at school, I don't, I don't think I've ever used um, in any of my businesses at all, which is weird because, I don't know, maybe they should um, rethink the cu curriculum. But, um, yeah, I did okay at school, went to college, studied business, and that's where I was kind of introduced to online selling. Uh, so I bought a pair of Air Max for myself, weirdly, and I, w I didn't wear them that much, and then I checked how much they were selling for, and it was more than what I bought them for, and I was like, like, what? I'm gonna try and sell them, so I, I listed them up, um, I sold them and it was like, I've just made money like just like that. And I was like, okay. And then I figured out how to build like an eBay store. I don't even think I was 18 at the time. I think I was using like my mom's account. Um, obviously I took all the money, but I, I made an account on eBay. I used to, and this is a weird one. I remember being in college, um, in class and I remember like there was a row of computers and my teacher was there and I always used to be shopping on the JD sale in class um, obviously getting the stuff delivered and then listing them at retail price and I don't know it became it turned from like a hobby into a business without me even knowing uh, by the time I left college it was big enough to just, just carry on, keep going. So I built my eBay business. Um, I was going to Nike stores as much as I could. I remember I used to pay my friend um, 10 pounds to take me to a Nike store because I couldn't drive at that point. And I literally used to walk out with like six or seven bags full of trainers and then just list them on eBay and they always just sell for retail price and it was weird because when I was in the store um, I remember I used to find the code of the shoe to figure out if it would sell uh, type the shoe into eBay look at the sold listings see how much or if there was any that was selling and that was my way of kind of figuring the market out and the good thing about that was there was no risk so Obviously, when you buy a product from a store, you get 30 day return. 
So if the product didn't sell, particularly, well, this was more early on, but if the product didn't sell within the first, you know, three weeks, I think the return policy was like four weeks. If the product didn't sell within three weeks, I could just go return it, get my money back. So there's literally no risk. And then, man, I was doing that for, from about 16 uh, till, till I was about 20. And I remember that there was a day that I woke up one morning and I had an email from eBay and they shut my account down. It was fully my fault. Um, definitely something I've learned from, but it was literally like, I'd, I'd lost everything. You know, when, when you're going from uh, a daily running business that, you know, I put my all in for this long and the fact they can just take it away like that, it was, it was horrible, I think for like a month or two. I remember texting my mom and brother and saying, don't speak to me, <laughs> my eBay's just been taken down. And like looking back, I'm laughing um, because it really was a blessing in disguise and everything that I'd learned from that, um, you know, led me down the path of kind of what I'm doing now. So not only did it tell me not to rely on uh, one source of income or one platform. Um, sometimes you've got to follow the rules. And because I didn't have another choice, it almost made me look for other avenues of how to make money. And then weirdly from that, I think somehow I made another eBay. There's always a loophole. Um, I figured out how to get products from China and I was selling phone cases, uh, accessories and there was, it was less of Nike stores and stuff and more getting products, um, you know, flown in and selling them. And the good thing about that is Obviously, I wasn't going to the Nike store as much. Like I didn't have to be somewhere. The business just started running itself. So as soon as I listed the stuff, they would sell and then an hour, two, three hours a day was just packing them uh, and sending them off. So you're probably thinking like, what else? What did you do with your time? So from that, uh, I started getting into reading. I've read quite a few books. Um, the secret, if anyone's like into manifestation or anything like that, it's probably a great place to start the secret. It's surface level stuff, but um, it definitely opened my eyes. Like, And again, weirdly, I was already doing this stuff. Before I'd read the book, I was doing this stuff without even realizing. So reading, reading that book, it just like reaffirmed everything I was doing. I was on the right track. I was doing the right things. Um, so yeah, I read that book. Um, it was only maybe two years ago I got into stocks and crypto and like forms of investing. Again, from reading these books, because I did have a lot of time. Uh, obviously keeping fit as well. I was doing, uh, going to the gym. I got a friend that works at a gym and he kind of got me into fitness, um, which was pretty cool. I'll come on to kind of friends and surrounding yourself with the right people, well, the way I surround myself with the right people and how that's kind of affected my life as well. Um, but yeah, so I started reading and two years ago, as I was saying, I'd got into stocks and crypto. Again, it was just, I didn't have a clue about any of this before actually, uh, until I started to learn about it. And again, it was just another another source of income of, um, you know, a way to, to make money and not working for money yourself, but making your money work for you, uh, which which again, I don't I don't think many people know or they're not they're not willing to take the risk, which is probably I'd say the difference between you know someone that works a nine to five and an entrepreneur. Um, because they're always just willing, entrepreneurs are always willing to take risks and that's why no risk, no reward. So I think that's, that's one thing that 
kind of sets um, sets entrepreneurs apart, and yeah, just just the willingness to to learn new things, um, and be able to take those risks to be able to get those rewards. So going on to my, um, I guess my friends, it's it's a weird one because I've got different groups of friends that are completely different, but the people that I spend the most time with, so for example, my brother, um, he had, he built his own business as well and sold it. Um, you know, being around him is, is like the effect that it's had, even unconsciously is crazy because I always say you are the sum of the five people you spend the most time with. And when you spend so much time with someone or people, you just start to mimic who they are. Um, so it's always good to, and now I'm much more conscious about this. So again, with like negative energy and stuff, I, I kind of just try to avoid that and spend my time with people that are gonna have a positive impact on me, that I'm gonna learn from, that have made mistakes themselves that I can learn from, that are, they're gonna push me, um, you know, like especially people with older brothers like myself. It's good for them to keep you in check and if you are an older brother, keep your little brother in check, even your little sister. It's, it's important because even at the time you might think Oh, he's doing my head in or what's he talking about in later life you're going to realize that it's important to to listen not just to you know people close family but uh you know people that have got businesses or e experts that are in their field because they, there is going to be times that you're going to be struggling um you know you've got to you've got to have that strength um, and have the accountability to be like, I've got to get myself together. So yeah, that is having the right people around you is very, very important because it literally is one path or the other. And that, that can be what decides your, your entire life. So yeah, so um, as I was saying, I had the, the eBay business with the accessories. Um, I also then figured out how to create my own private label stuff. So I had that those kind of things made as well. Um, a private label, if you don't know what a private label uh, product is, it's a product that's under a certain company but with a different name. So it's like Amazon selling a product under the name like top tech for example but it's still amazon that's selling it so i was making my own products under a different name to my comp to my business if that makes sense uh so yeah i started doing that i learned how to build a shopify i think everyone's familiar with with that these days uh, i created a shopify managed to figure out uh, social media marketing finding influencers and I probably wasted, I say wasted, invested a lot of money uh, and learned a lot about how to invest, the kind of people you wanna be investing in, uh, how to promote your, your business. Of course, like there's Facebook ads and stuff, which I was, I was using as well. Um, and I built a, another online store that sold almost seasonal products and accessories. Um, so at this point, I've got like Etsy, eBay, uh, a Shopify store, and one of my goals, I think from when I was younger, I, always, I was always into what I wore. Even if people didn't like what I wore, I was conscious about what I was wearing. And from that, I've always kind of had a passion for like a fashion, um, passion for fashion, if that's what you want to say, and kind of building a clothing brand. 
So I remember, I think it was about four years ago, um, I had been trying to find these check trousers and I literally couldn't find a pair that fit me and looked good. So I, I just remember waking up one day and I was thinking, I'm gonna have to just make my own. So I figured out how to find a supplier online. Um, after about thousands of pounds, different samples, different suppliers, you know, 10, 11, 12 different samples. I finally created, I guess, the perfect checkered trouser and fit. And I was like, this is gonna be the first product that I'm gonna sell for my clothing brand. And I kind of based the first collection around that. Um, it took me probably, I'd say, a year, a year and a half to fully create a collection, um, find the right suppliers. I found a videographer, uh, someone to take pictures of the clothes, built the website myself. That was literally through trial and error as well. I did not have a clue how to build a website. If someone said, go and build a website, I would not have a clue. Uh, but I, I figured out how, I figured out buying domains, which again, you, you wouldn't even think of. So I bought the domain, um, I launched it in, 20, so it was about three years ago, September the 1st, when everything was ready, uh, launched the, the first collection and within a month, I remember I think I bought 100 check trousers uh, in one style, they had like a black stripe down the side. And within one month, they sold out all the all the check trousers that sold out, um, and it was like having going from looking for a pair to wear, having an idea to create some, and then like seeing them in real life. It was like it was just a weird, it's a surreal feeling. Thinking something in your head and then seeing it in real life, it's yeah, it's weird, um, and it just it made me realise. The possibilities are endless. There's so much opportunity out there. You can literally make a business from anything. Even like just on your phone, that's where it started. It started on my phone. Um, and obviously it's, it was mad how it came about, the whole check trouser thing came about of me looking for a pair, realizing that maybe there's a gap in the market for it. Um, and then creating it and a year and a half, two years later, I've got, I'm literally running a clothing brand. Um, and then that was going extremely well uh, for the first few months. Like I said, we sold out the check trousers. Um, Facebook ads was extremely cheap at that point. So I was just pushing that. And then we moved into a unit in January, 2020. And obviously it's probably the worst time to, to move into a unit because three months later, we all know what happened. It was locked down, which affected what our business dramatically. We had to move out of the unit because it just wasn't feasible. Um, and yeah, we, we, came, we came across a lot of problems, but we learned a lot as well. And because of, because of lockdown, a lot of businesses almost had to use online marketing, uh, which was predominantly Facebook and Instagram at that point. So that just drove the price up of, um, of Facebook ads, which didn't help again. And we, we were struggling to sell because obviously lockdown, people didn't have as much money to spend. So we moved out of that. Um, I'm still doing that. Still absolutely love creating products. Um, that's almost a side hustle, which is how everything, which is how everything has, has been um, from when I started at school. Um, I only had one job. I used to work in Zara in Solihull um, when I was 16, when I was at college. I was a Christmas temp. I love Zara as well. This was another, um, this was another kind of, it pushed me to 
do something bigger. They literally threw me in the deep end, but again, looking back, I'm glad that I did it. I learned a lot. I met a load of amazing people. Um, and yeah, that was, I remember just saying, I, th I don't know if I could work under someone. Not to say that I would never, because like if something happened and I had to work with someone, amazing. Um, but that really made me think, oh, I've, got, I've got to do more, I've got to do more. And then obviously everything else came. Um, so yeah, I'm still, I'm still doing it. I'm very grateful. Um, I've got a lot of freedom already. Um, I'm just getting started. Thank you for listening to my story. It's been a pleasure to, to tell it. Until next time.